Hi, I'm Joseph Patrick, co-founder of Lamont Brothers. And in today's video, I'm going to answer the question, how can I identify a load-bearing wall? And in order to do that, I'm going to give you a little tour of a project we're in the middle of. It's a 1970s split-level home. And as in most of these homes, there's a wall that divides the kitchen and the dining room from the entryway and the living room. And sometimes, in our experience, these walls are load-bearing, and sometimes they're not load-bearing. So this is a great opportunity to take you on a journey and help you understand how we identify whether the wall is load-bearing or not, and enable you to do the same. Now we're inside the home. I'm going to give you a view of the floor plan and the wall we're looking at. This is a standard 1970s floor plan. You've got your entryway, your living room, and your kitchen dining room. And this is the wall we're talking about, whether it's load-bearing or not load-bearing. So in order to identify whether the wall is load-bearing or not, you want to identify what's sitting on top of the wall. Is there anything sitting on top of the wall? Is it running parallel to the wall or perpendicular to the wall? Especially you want to determine, do I have ceiling joists or floor joists sitting on top of the wall? I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right here, we've got two temporary walls on either side of me, and we've got ceiling joists up here that are running perpendicular to those two walls. And what we did is we took out the wall that's running, you know, it was running right here, and we've already demolished it, and next week we're going to come in and install two micro lambs here as beams to hold up the ceiling joists. Now, as I look up, I'll tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing these ceiling joists that are two by eights, and they're broken on what used to be that wall. And so that's very, very common in a stick frame roof structure like this because it's expensive to get a joist that's running all the way from one side of the house to the other, or it's impossible because it would be too big, it would be a beam, and so they break them right on top of that wall. That means it's definitely a load-bearing wall. So if you climb up into your attic and you see those joists broken on top of the wall like that, so they overlap, then it's definitely a load-bearing wall. The other thing you can do if you really can't figure out which direction the joists are going or you, can't, you don't have access to the attic space, another way to do that is to look at the roof structure. And if you've got a typical gable roof structure, which a lot of these 1970s homes have, You've got a gable that runs from one end to the other end of the house, and you can identify a gable because it looks like a triangle, and then you've got a wall that goes all the way up to the top. And generally, the walls that are running right along that ridge line from one end to the other, those walls are load-bearing walls. And the walls that are running perpendicular to that, those walls are not load-bearing walls because they're running along with the ceiling joists. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something about how to identify whether a wall is load bearing or not load bearing. For more information, please check out the rest of our YouTube channel, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out our website for more helpful info on home remodeling.